there is only black and white. You either love it or hate it. Pineapple on pizza, olives, strawberry flavored ice cream, doing the dishes. And since it's in the title, coding in Go. Today, I'm going to give you my personal top five reasons why I chose Go and why I love it so much. So let's go. Intro in three, two, one, go. Hello and welcome fellow coders. Thanks for joining me today. My name is Thomas and yes, I have to admit, I love Golang. I know that for some people Go is an absolute terrible language and that's totally okay. Everybody has his or her preferences, but I absolutely love it. And today I'm going to tell you my very personal top five reasons why I love Go and make sure to stay until the end. There might be some bonus reason there. But before we jump into the list, we first need to talk about my dark past. I spent my first six years of professional coding in Java. I had some projects where I needed JavaScript, Angular and Python, but 90% of code I wrote was written in Java. And personally, I have some problems with Java, especially if you compare it to other languages like Python, JavaScript or Go. But don't get me wrong, I still think it's a great language and this should not become some kind of Java bashing or so. These are just some pain points I had in my first years of coding. Pain point number one. Writing code in Java always made me feel kind of slow. Most of the Java applications I was working on had super slow startup times. So every time you try to run your code or test your application, it takes what feels like an eternity to execute. Especially if you use the Spring Framework. Me as a developer, I want feedback on my code as fast as possible. And it's part of the process that I have to wait for my code to compile, for the application to start, for everything to set up. But if the whole process takes more than a couple of seconds, I get annoyed. Imagine waiting for two minutes only to find out that you made a spelling mistake. Yeah, you basically wasted two minutes of your life. This feeling of wasting so much time on waiting for Java to do its thing, it was really bothering me. The second pain point I have with Java is the fact that projects in most cases have a crap load of external libraries. Java has a lot to offer in terms of libraries you can use when you write code. There are a variety of widespread libraries like the Apache libraries or the Spring Framework libraries. Basically lips that every single Java developer has used in his life. But to me, this sometimes feels like a huge drawback. I literally had a discussion with one of my former co-workers who tried to convince me to use the Apache Commons library to replace three lines of code with one at only one single place in our codebase. Until this day, I do not understand how you can do things like this. Why would you add almost one megabyte of dependencies only to replace three lines of code by one? Just write the damn function yourself. Please don't get offended if you also think that this is the right move. It's just my personal view and something that bothers me back in the day and apparently still bugs me. Another thing that always felt cumbersome was the fact that every single Java application I had built had like 20 to 30 external libraries. And don't get me started on the libraries they depend on. Sometimes they had version incompatibilities, severe CVE issues or simply got new cool features with an update. Maintaining all these li Oopala. Maintaining all these libraries felt like a full-time job in itself. And I ain't got time for that. I'm getting paid for providing business value with code, not for maintaining numbers in a file. Speaking of external libraries, pain point number three is the complexity and cognitive overload of Java codebases. Some of these frameworks are actually pretty complex. When I started using the Spring Framework, it took me weeks or even months to fully understand what is happening under the hood. I read two books, watched countless videos and read a gazillion blog articles and tutorials to understand what is actually happening if I simply add the add controller annotation. Maybe it was my inexperience back in the day, but to be honest, it felt like you needed a PhD in order to understand the magic behind it. Java in general had become more complex. With the addition of lambda expressions, I had the feeling that the complexity has at least doubled. Don't get me wrong, I think that lambda expressions have been a great addition to the language. Instead of filtering in one function, then sorting in one function and picking the top three values in one function, you can now do everything in one line. 
which is great. But I saw so many examples where the lambda expressions got abused in an absolute worst way possible. And I have to admit, some of these examples have been written by me, since I did not know what I was doing back then. And it also felt kind of cool to write complex shit and new features. Did I mention that I was pretty inexperienced when Java 8 came out? The readability suffered, the testability suffered, the maintainability suffered, basically every single aspect of the coding experience suffered because the complexity of the codebase increased. Using a language which has simpler ways of dealing with things always has an advantage over more complex solutions, at least in my humble opinion, which is why I picked up Python as my language of choice for my personal projects. Speaking of personal projects, one thing I always did was coding projects in my free time, whether it was to just improve my skills or learning new frameworks or protocols, or to build actual projects for myself to help me in my daily life. These are mostly process automations like web scrapers, scripts, CSV and Excel file manipulations, CLI tools and REST services with breathtaking UIs. And I want to execute these things as executables. This is actually my pain point number four building small executables that I can run on multiple devices. Even though Java's mantra of write once run everywhere remains true, it comes with the downside of requiring a pre-installed Java runtime environment. Or you could actually create executables and integrate the GRE into them, but their size explodes because of it. All in all, I need a language where I can write my code fast, without a ton of external dependencies, which is easy to read and maintain, and where I can create easy to use executables or files. And then, one day I stumbled across a language called Go. After skimming through a few of why you should learn Go articles and watching a few tutorials, Go seemed to solve basically every single problem. So I decided to give it a try. And I really have to say, I absolutely do not regret it. Since a few months, I use Go professionally at work, which is why my experience with Go has at least quadrupled. But even if I would just have ended up replacing Python with Go for my personal projects, I still think it was absolutely worth it. And now, finally you get to know why. Let's jump into my personal top 5 reasons why I love Go. Reason number 1. Go is blazingly fast in basically every single aspect. Golang code compiles in less than a second. And because it gets compiled to actual machine code, your Go applications obviously outperform languages that are either interpreted like Python or need runtimes like Java. And because of its simplicity with only 25 keywords, writing Go code feels super fast especially because it is a very explicit language. If you write some sort of slice manipulation function, you have to write it yourself. The plus side is though, you fully understand what is happening. This takes away the extra cognitive overhead I had with many of the lambda functions I had in Java. More code for less thinking, I think this is a good trade-off. And with the addition of generics, it will even become faster, since you do not need to duplicate as much code as you used to. If you want to learn more about generics, make sure to check out my tutorial. Another thing is that testing your code with Go is super fast. In Java, if you were to write integration tests that bootstrap the Spring context, your test cases take up minutes to execute. In Go, it feels like your test cases have already been run before you even hit the enter key on the keyboard. So all in all, I felt way more productive when writing Go code, because I didn't have to wait so much time for my programming language to do its thing. Pain point number one, solved. This leads us to reason number two. Reason number two is that Go has an outstanding standard library. Look at the sheer amount of cool things you can do with it. For me as a backend developer, I almost always write REST services that read or write data from databases, manipulates it and represents it in JSON format. So I need to serialize and deserialize JSON, which I can do with a Go JSON package. I also need to write the HTTP server, which I can do with the net package. And lastly, I need a database connection, which I can almost do entirely with the SQL package. The only external module I need is a database driver. Even if I were to, let's say, swap out REST for gRPC, I only need to import one single module. And that's it. I know this is all a bit simplified, but you get the point, right? In all cases I had so far, I ended up with way less modules I had to import compared to my old Java projects. So pain point number two? Check. In most cases, the standard library of Go is more than enough to get things done. And the simpler, the better, right? Simplicity brings us to the next reason why I love Go so much. And that is reason number three. Extensive error checking. No, just kidding. Reason number three? Go simplicity. Go is a strongly statically typed language. 
so you always know what kind of variable you are dealing with. No need to guess whether the ID is a string or a number. And you also have more control over your variables. For instance, if your age of a person or whatever is an incrementing number starting from zero, use unsigned ints. This way you can make sure that no one ever stores a negative age into your database. You do not even have to write the if age smaller than zero check as well. I kind of like these strongly and statically typed languages. Maybe it is because of my Java background or maybe I'm just too dumb to use dynamically typed languages. Either way, I am personally a fan of languages that kind of dictate how you should use them. If you take Python for example, it has its Zen of Python, consisting of around 20 rules to follow when you write Python code. Go with its idiomatic ways is not much far away from that. There is even an article written by one of the project members of the Golang language that is called the Zen of Go. I highly recommend reading it. I'll leave a link in the description down below. So, somewhat like Python, Go also has idiomatic ways of doing things. Like these gazillion error checks. I know that these can be annoying, but you find them everywhere. There is not a single project out there that does not need to check errors. It is just a Go way of dealing with them. And these rules Golang lays upon us drastically reduce cognitive overload. If I were to open any kind of open source project, no matter what, the code looks almost the same way as the project I'm working on. At least if they adhere the idiomatic way of Go. And this is great. So simplicity rules. Again. Pain point number three, gone. Coming up next, we have building executables as my reason number four. At work, you mostly do git push and let the CICD pipeline handle the rest for you, right? So why is this so important to me? As I said earlier, I spend a lot of my spare time writing code code that I want to execute, not only on my machine running under macOS, but also on my wife's laptop running under Windows, on my server or my Raspberry Pi running under Linux. So I must be able to write my code on my machine, but let it run under many different operating systems. This is where Golang actually shines. You can simply change one single build parameter from this to that, and it spits out the binary which can be run under a completely different operating system and CPU architecture. This would also be possible with Java, given you have the Java runtime environment pre-installed. And the same goes for Python. You need to have Python installed in order to execute Python code. This is not the case in Golang, since for me personally, the ability to cross-compile binaries for many different OSs with ease is a huge plus, and one of the top reasons why I love Go. So pain point number four, bye bye. The go build command directly leads us to reason number 5. Go tooling. I love the go toolchain. It comes with so many different commands so that I am able to do basically everything I want to without the need of installing additional tools. I can build binaries, run tests, look at my code coverage, benchmark my code, format my code, run static analysis on my code, linting my go files, profile my application, run stress tests, manage modules, view the documentation of my code, check for race conditions and of course run my application. And all of that without installing additional tools. That's pretty amazing, right? If you want to see a tutorial about the Go toolchain, let me know in the comments down below. I am more than happy to create one if you, my fellow coders, want to see it. So these are my top 5 reasons why I love Golang. But wait, there's more. I also have a bonus reason why I love Go so much. And that is, Golang is pretty easy to learn compared to many other languages. I learned Go while I had 5 or 6 years of coding experience, so I would say that I definitely was no junior back then, but also not super experienced. So I had a bit of an advantage compared to a complete beginner, but I was able to learn the basics of Go in about a weekend or so. I'm talking about the 20% you need to know in order to be able to accomplish 80% of what you want to write, you know, according to the Pareto principle. I'm sure you guys know what I'm talking about. So basically, learn the syntax and the principles like how interfaces work in Go, how Go uses structs to be OOP-ish, how it favors composition over inheritance, not throwing your Mac out of the window while writing another error check, learning the most used Go CLI commands, all these basic stuff. Actually, the developers of Go did a pretty awesome job of providing us with an absolute beast of documentation, as well as a Go tour and a Go playground, so we developers can learn the language without even installing anything on our machines. So if any one of you Golang developers ever watches this, Thank you so much. These things are extremely helpful for us. So if you want to learn Go or are actually learning Go right now, I highly recommend reading the documentation and complete the Go tour. Links are in the description down below. And of course, watch all my Go tutorials. 
that's pretty self-explanatory, right? So that was it for my personal top 5 plus 1 reasons of why I love Go so much. I know that some of these reasons are highly specific towards me. But I'm sure that some of you fellow coders are also having the same issues with Java that I had. So tell me more about that. What do you think about my reasons? Do you agree or completely disagree? And also tell me about your top 5 reasons why you love or hate Go. I would love to hear more about that in the comments down below. And that is it for today. Thank you so much for watching. If you enjoyed it, make sure to follow me on my social media. And of course, smash the like button, completely obliterate the subscribe button and gently rub the bell button. Until next time, keep on coding.